Hey guys, Danny here with Partey. So I'm going to do a couple of quick uh, clips to show the spray-on version of Goppity Goop so that you guys can see how the spray-on version works. Now I've got this on a 100-inch screen. This is actually a test panel screen uh, that I've been using. It. I'd relegated it to use as a tabletop. Uh, so a lot of the smaller panel screens that I've shown you in the in the past few weeks have all been sprayed on top of uh, this panel. Outside, I use it as a table. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, small compressors out there. Uh, one's uh, oilless and the other one's not. Um, but I just have a small setup. And so I, today I went out and sprayed this morning uh, just a couple of quick coats uh, over the top of the uh, the test panel screen and as you can see just a couple of coats coated it very nicely I can even show you real quick um, excuse me the texture if you can see it some in there you can see all kinds of things where stuff is just rolled over the side and some of the test text miss or test uh, mixes that we've done um, there's a number of different uh, imperfections you can see this border right here um, that's just where it's raised a little bit because of the overspray paint from um, other test panels that I've sprayed on top of it. So just want to give you an idea as to how, I, and I do this guys, honestly, I don't know what you're going to spray it on. Um, you may decide to spray it on, uh, say, a piece of um, plexiglass. You may decide to spray it on just a piece of PVC. Maybe you're going to spray it on some cloth. I'm not really sure what you're going to spray it on. So, you know, we'll talk a little bit about pros and cons, and I'll give you some tips and tricks on things you, you want to be aware of. Uh, and probably uh, also sort of list out some of the optimal things that you would want to use as a backing for what you'd spray this on. Okay, uh, so that you don't maybe end up with something that's not going to work out well for you. So I'll give you some more information about that tonight when we talk about uh, the release of uh, Goppity Goop live on the website. Um, and uh, so right now I'm just going to give you some test displays, uh, some dark, some light on the spray on version. All right, so we're going to start. You can see I've got front facing light hitting the screen there. That's direct sunlight hitting it from the front. Uh, so I'm not going to try to hide anything, um, but this will give you an idea as to how uh, the Goppity Goop spray, as well as the roll-on, because the, essentially it's just a matter of thickness in the, in the mixes. But you can see how well this is going to provide you not only great skin tones, okay? So you've got very nice flesh tones, very bright whites there, um, the color articulation is absolutely wonderful, and you get the deep, dark contrast that you're looking for in a darker screen. Very easy application, uh, especially if you have any experience in spraying. This sprays very well, guys. I've sprayed stuff, even stuff that I've created, I've tried to spray, and quite frankly, <laughs> it can it can be a mess right uh if you don't have the consistency right so the one thing here that's a definite plus is that the consistency is absolutely beautiful i'll get in here so you can see detail give you some side angles here move around pardon me for getting in front of the screen Okay, let's go for something bright real quick. Snow's always good. Now right now I've got the projector, it's the uh, 1080p, and I'm only projecting in 1080 right now, guys. 1080p, uh, Optima HD 143X is set in 13 feet and 7 inches from the screen.
Okay, and real quick, before I move on from here, I'm going to pause real quick. Because a lot of times, things that folks won't tell you is that whites on a black screen, if you don't do it right, they turn very silvery when you come to the side. You get up close and you look at them from the side, they turn very, very silvery. Uh, so, Gopity Goop uh, has been formulated to not do that. I'm not saying you won't see a, a hint of silver in there. You most certainly will. Um, you know, I'm not going to uh, be false with you, but you can see with your own eyes that it's very, very subtle. So the white level balance is really very, very close to what you get on a light gray screen. <clears throat> All right, so let's find something else. Okay, we'll do the Skyworth video here. I think it's important to note that this formula is actually derived from our serious formula, which is a black mix. Uh, so this is an overspray. Uh, it's not meant to be a full coating. I guess you could use it as that, um, if you, especially if you got a couple of quarts, you would have enough to be able to spray just this, regardless of whatever the understructure is. But I would recommend, and I'll just I'll mention this more tonight. But I would recommend that you spray it over a flat black uh, to get the deepest and darkest um, images in your contrast. But not just that purpose. Much like whenever you're spraying, say, silver metallics or something on a motorcycle body or a car body, um, it's always best to use a good solid black undercoat because it really makes your colors pop. Uh, so you would think that, oh, it's going to provide a lot of absorption. It will not. It'll provide enough to give you that deep contrast. But it's going to also, what it's going to do is it's going to highlight the contrast. Because contrast, once again, is not black, okay? Contrast is a range. It's a range of values between white and um, your perfect black. Okay, so I will also, let's check out one more dark one. And I just want to clarify something uh, with, not against, but with uh, Crow's video upload yesterday. You can see the sun hitting right here, and you can also see it front-facing from the window right in here. Um, what I would say is that a truly rejecting, that's the reason we always called our stuff ambient light fighting, uh, because the diffusion coatings on our other screens. Now, this is a coating mix that we provide, and it does provide some diffusion principles to help fight light. Um, but it's not rejecting anything just like Kenneth Bird's stuff isn't rejecting anything, because if it was rejecting it, and it's rejecting is really the wrong word. It would be really reflecting, um, because you would have these physical blockades that are built into the screen structure, the texture of the screen, that actually reflect that light back to where it comes from okay that's what rejection means um, it doesn't mean that because the screen's black and absorbs uh, a level of light and then diffuses some that it's ambient light rejection so <clears throat> bird doesn't know what he's talking about just plain and simple guys never has and i don't think he ever will but there you go. There's a display of Goppity Goop in the spray-on version. Uh, this is not the optimized. When I say optimized, it's really what you consider optimal. Um, there is a way that you can get this uh, uh, just a bump brighter uh, in your final coat. Um, and we'll, that'll be in the instructional video. Um, but, you know, you need to be careful when you do that because the more gain that you get, the, the further that you, you sort of narrow your half gain. You notice you don't really have a half gain on this one so much and that's because you know there was only two standard coats 
Uh, there was nothing that I did to try to push the gain up to about a 1-2 to 1-3 gain. All right, so hopefully uh, I'll talk to you guys a little later tonight. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You guys have a great day.